Okay, three, two, and a one, and we're live. Wow. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Mr. Mark Facchini. Thank you. So lovely to have you here. Lovely to be here. So, um, and of course, as always, we hear the memoir quest. Would I like to say hello and thank you to Mr. Henry Gibbs? Ah, hello and thank you. And to Mr. Jakubus Temkevicius. Hello, hello. Yeah, yeah. So here we are. I uh, missed the strangest time of our lives. Mm -hmm. uh, top five strange times, at top, least. Top five strange yeah, times. You've got some other strange times? Plenty. Plenty mm. of strange times. Collectively, definitely a strange time of our generation. Mm -hmm. I'd say. How are you dealing with it, Mark? Uh, all right, I think. In I mean, I've gone through various phases, I'd say. Mm-hmm. At the very beginning of the lockdown, there was uh, quite an ecstatic feeling of, hey, eternal holiday. <laughs> mm. And then after mm. a while, the days started to look a bit too much like each other. And, uh, groundhog syndrome. You started realizing that you weren't actually really making any money. Yeah. Sort of stuff like that. Bit of a, an uncertainty creeps in. That's it, and mm. and also, I mean, at the beginning of this, I had no idea what the impact would be. I mean, if you had any mm. video material of me predicting the outcome of this situation back in March, I would be ridiculed by now because I had, I mean, I was like. Oh. Oh, yeah, we'll be fine. Give it three weeks mm -hmm. and then everything will be back up and running. Mm. That wasn't exactly how it turned out, was what, it? No, what do the numbers look like? we got the numbers up on the screen there. What do they look like in Denmark right now, actually? Mm. 10,000, 11,000 confirmed, 8,000 recovered, and 537 deaths. But, I mean, these disease. numbers, i got to say... Recovered, yeah. These numbers are um, just loaded with so many insecurities, aren't they? They are. This That's been one of the things, hey. It's just the data is just so many different angles on the data. Yeah. So many different ways. Are you talking about the thing of like also the, if somebody like, you know, gets it, has some other sickness and dies, but dies with Corona and then it. That's a huge part of it. I mean, from what I've read in Italy, if you have the illness, that'll be your death cause if you die. So you might be a terminal cancer patient, uh -huh. you catch COVID-19, you die, then that's your reason of death. Yeah. So that yeah. fucks up the numbers a little bit. But of course you're and dead, then you also died you had because an, you also have cancer. That's it. Yeah. And then in America, apparently, I don't know if this is true, but they I read that they have this system that the hospitals get like this special extra funding if they have a lot of COVID-19 sure, the, yeah. deaths, yeah. so they have yeah. an interest in amping up those mm -hmm. yeah, that's numbers. An issue. Yeah, I, bet, I wonder if we've got something going like that in Denmark as well, because we do have a system over here that is based on funding. Uh -huh. Lots of different types of funding coming in, little foundations being set up for situations and things like that. I wonder if, uh, you know, if it's just like the if it becomes the norm to just be like yeah it's a COVID nineteen because mm. uh, we better put it down as a COVID nineteen because we got to get that funding because what it you know it's good to have the funding right yeah maybe um, it also it also feels like there are there's a lot of probability stuff going on within hospitals and with doctors and things where they don't have the resources to necessarily make do the, all the tests but they're like. Okay, so I've got all the symptoms here, and it's probably corona, and so I'm just going to put it. Yeah. Or not put it, in, in, depending on what the data coming out of their particular hospital is because of all of these certain yeah, things. Yeah, and what's the what, what do you want to do? Do you want to be like, it looks like corona, I'm going to put it down as corona for, because we've got to be, like, we can't take the chance mm. of not yeah. quarantining this person mm. or not. Mm. So, yeah, it really, it really brings to light that for sure that my... Um, uh, I've been thinking about that old saying, uh, you know, it'll become apparent what happened later. Yeah. That you know, like saying. history will show what it was yes. that actually went on. Um, mm, one the interesting thing I heard about the um, the uh, COVID is here in Denmark, I have a friend who works in a hospital and she said that only 4% of the staff that got sick 
uh, had a uh, uh, immune in their system. So only four percent wow. developed immunity yeah, antibodies. Developed immune in them. So it means that it has a very high chance for second wave to come up mm. because people don't develop enough of immune for it. Yeah. So, but it could be that the second time, if you get sick, maybe you there's just fifty percent of chance of you. Or and increases of you getting better and better uh -huh. with each time you get more sick. Oh, but it's weird. There's not much. Uh, there's not much known about it yet. No, I don't. I, I've been looking. You've told me about that actually before. I've also been kind of searching because this is one of the things we're also getting information from all kinds of things. Like I got a, I got a message sent around at one point that was like a recording message that sounded kind of like it mm. was a nurse saying some things that one, i got that one yeah yeah you got mm. that one too mm -hmm. i know a few people that got that yeah. yeah and it's like um and then i got that the one that sent it to me was a nurse oh right so it i validated it mm. immediately and then only when somebody asked me where did this come from i was like it's from the nurse at the thing and it just uh it seems so legit and then at the same time it didn't seem legit mm. it just seemed like a thing that nurses are just as susceptible they have for sure some extra data on sort of the on the but they they have their biases they have their biases of just like, they anybody. like everybody else mm. as mm. well as doctors and everybody else i mean i think in many in many senses this situation is a perfect example of uh, how many how difficult it is for us to navigate inside this new stream of uh, information and non-information that is the internet, which we are only just beginning to uh, get used to. In a way, yeah, and it's constantly evolving as well. Uh -huh. it's, a, it's, a, it's such a wild new thing, um, the, the internet. <laughs> it is. <laughs> yeah. Sounds silly to say, but I mean, yeah. seriously, I think... I think there can be no doubt that uh, our human evolution has no, I mean, it's not anywhere near the same uh, potential of development, or at least the, the, the uh, they, our brains can't develop as quick as computer brains can. Yeah. So we have no, sen we have no chance of keeping up. We'll always be, mm. Mm. be behind, yeah. you know? That's where the neural link comes in. Which is the new the Elon Musk's new uh, oh, company yeah. of I don't know if it's new but yeah it's a it's a susceptor it's a thing that you put on your brain uh -huh. basically that uh, allows you to interact seamlessly with the AI oh, brain. Uh, brain but first of all it's for it's supposed to be able to like he's saying people that are What's it called? Quadriplegic? Is that what it? No, mm. is that what it's called? If you can't use your um, arms and legs, arms and legs, mm -hmm. yeah. And then he says, "No, oh, we can just Neuralink go in and oh. so, <laughs> set that." Set. He talks about like a shunt. Is that what it is? Send like a. It's like a power surge, and then it can say like, "Oh, working again. Those nerves and things like yeah. that. Everything fine." Yeah. Wake, that's, wake them up. that's yeah, yeah. That's it, where it's well, been pioneered mostly. That technology, hey, in, in terms of like all the research and stuff that's it's gone forth is in the medical and then there's a lot of sphere. people that are yeah exactly there's a mm. lot of people let's say that if you have um i don't actually know the term for it watch it when you bought the thing when you've got spastic arms and things is that what it's called is that hasn't that become a bad word now well spastic isn't really yeah it's not really a medical term it, no it's it well, was you know it what was I'm a, talking about? it was a charity in england that was uh and you know s-p-a-s-t-i-c Oh, okay. That stood for something else. That was it's for because in Danish for we call it spastic glamour. Uh -huh. But do we still call it that? And we used to say spastic also. Yeah. Which I think it's now more of a yeah a derogatory term. Uh -huh. Yeah, it is a bit. It's just a generalized term. Okay. Anyway, mm. people that have dysfunctions <laughs> with their body with their that arms. have the ability yeah. uh, to uh, that are now the uh, me, the um, prostheses that are available are making it so that they can just get rid of their uh, legs and arms, yeah. the ones that don't work, and get on that. Yeah. And then it's really smart to have a neural link to your Body new parts. robot legs of course. that uh, interact seamlessly with that mechanism, right? So there are there's a fantastic um, podcast and Facebook page and all around guy called Dennis Rivine. Have you ever met Dennis? 
He's the. Um, Is he the guy who makes the of actual course, of course. news? Yeah, the actual news. That's what I'm talking about. Of uh, OC OC, of course, of course. Oh. Um, uh, and he, um, yeah, he's making. Um, uh, he's it does a lot of future research. So I just forgot what it was that it was. But he he is some of the actual news that I'm getting. From him, there are some things being thrown around like in 20 to 40 years, the human race will not be able to recognize themselves as we look now because of our cyborgness. Mm. You know, like, because it's not only for uh, fixing your broken limb. It's also for what about an extra arm mm. that you can put on and then it kind of just makes your... You can play the guitar really wildly, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, or yeah. you, you know, you, um. Or well, have you heard this experience with a with a monkey that they've done? I don't know, like a few years ago, well, more than a few years ago, where they connected uh, electronic hand to a monkey's brain through sensors, and they kept it through the like early childhood of it. So basically, the monkey learned how to use that third limb as its own hand. Wow. So that monkey was thinking that it. She has three hands. Yeah. Whoa. That's how intuitive it became to use that bionic hand. Mm. They gave a monkey and, and a could, third arm and, and, and a hand. The, 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 the scientist standing right next to her and she just scratches with that hand in the back or something. Yeah, yeah. It's incredible to watch it. Wow, well, that's great. I'm, I'm mm. not sure if I can find it. What? Yeah, I haven't seen anything like that ever. You know about this, uh, I always think about when I think like the internet and the sort of vastness of technology and that whole sort of web. You know, in the conversations sometimes that we have as artists about creation, like the concept of create, making things, um, I'm, my, I'm always sort of adhering a little bit or flowing towards like the philosophy that we can't really create anything as humans. We can just mimic things that exist hmm. in nature and then we're able to sort of and then because we're bad at mimicking then it becomes something new yeah totally and it and we put two things together and then it seems very new also and and then it's it's fun to see um so where's the internet yeah where's the na nature version of the internet mm. um you know you can always find there's i the, the, i saw us talk once with a guy that says well for example look at a camera right it looks like a very human technology but of course it comes from probably human histories being in a cave and there's a little light hole mm. and then the outside gets mm. reflected in right mm. like the camera oculus camera or whatever right oh here's the monkey so oh it, it's, she's okay. controlling this hand with her brain uh-huh okay. and this, been, this video is posted oh, 11 years ago so this is oh just, my god okay, yeah so i i'd imagine that the arm was attached to the monkey yeah, me sure. too so that's not the case just it's for huge, the people Dion. but yeah but this is also 11 years right ago it's eons right in t we're for seeing a video years. we're is seeing a video a of, a, of a of a monkey eating uh and it's got this there's a bionic arm that's not attached to the monkey that the monkey is controlling with some with a with a brain sensors and feeding yeah. itself some. it's not eating a bagel it is the actual hand <laughs> the hands do look quite doughy <laughs> it does look like a bagel. but yeah this the and the, the but the demeanor of the monkey even though that it's actually it's kind of sad to watch yeah. it sort of be yeah, it's, it's actually a kind of a disgusting video because it's kind of like bound yeah. up so it can't move I mean, but that neck piece looks, oh, yeah, looks doesn't, good and doesn't look too cool medieval. but it, but on the other hand it does seem pretty uh relaxed and it's definitely been that through that situation before, before it seems yeah. But it seems very sort of like interactive. 11 years ago, that's e eons. Like in technology time, that might mm. as well be 100 years mm. compared to what human beings used to. See, that's the thing. Flow I mean, with, this right? development seems like it's just... It's Exponential. It, yeah. It is. Yeah. What was I saying just before we, before we put this up? Oh, yeah. The internet. Where is the internet version of... Uh, nature. Nature, yeah. And that's where um, a fantastic person called Paul Stamets, uh -huh. he's like a mushroom superstar, yeah. a uh, mycelial pretty, superstar. Pretty fun. He's a guy that uh, he's just deeply into uh, old growth forest mushrooms or uh -huh. just all kinds of mushrooms and their works and their, all their abilities. Uh, from psychedelic to mm. healing to all kinds of things. And he's like the mycelial network that is 
the way that forests communicate with each other. Mm-hmm. Trees communicate through the la- the one cell layer of mycelial networks. Mm-hmm. That's the internet. Like and the that's brain the, as well. I'd and then say. the brain. Yeah, it's yeah. totally. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, I can get into that. It's just it's fun to see that nothing. Mm. It's just fun that something so uh, that a lot of people perceive as being not a human thing mm-hmm. is a reflection still yeah. mm. of us. And the, and the world that we live in, mm-hmm. we yeah. cannot create something foreign. No. Yeah, how, how would we? Yeah, I'm, I'm how? Just, it's yeah. a closed system, right? Yeah. Also, a great just example of the fact that we are we aren't separate from nature. There like that, we consider nature as this separate entity, and that we are somehow standing alone from it because of all of our consciousness. But in fact, we are just furthering nature. This is all part of nature. Yeah. Uh, and totally. uh, and yeah, it's impossible for us to really separate in terms of our creations mm. and things that exactly. we do. And then there are some pretty wild sort of like sci-fi kind of outcome possibilities of that. I don't rem- do you remember the movie? What was it called? Was it called something with oh Obsidian maybe or something like that? It was with. It's been made a couple of times, and it's also a book last with Tom Cruise, and it's basically this thing that there's a big like it's there's um. In the movie, he's a uh, human being working on surveying a planet. Minority Report. It's not a Minority Report. That's oh. a Minority Report is the one with the future crimes. Yeah. And things like that, which is also a book from a uh, Philip K. Writer. Dick. Yeah. Philip K. Dick. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, but um, this movie is. I'll just spoilers to anybody that uh, this movie that I don't know the name of. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> just so it's just going to be. I'm just going to tell you everything. <laughs> Basically. Uh, you've got this big ass machine, and what it does is suck up water. Mm-hmm. It's a big, flying, huge spaceship, and then you it reveals in the end that this thing is actually an AI bot that has sort of taken over its home planet and now gone out looking for water and finds water planets to take over, and then it just sucks up all the water. Yeah. And uh, it makes uh, it, basically most of its energy is used on making clones of the perfect human specimen that it came from the other human planet oh. and just cloned that one and uh, just has this massive amount of clones and it just sends it off doing its bidding mm-hmm. um and it's just this take this it's like the dystopian version of the part of ourselves that are conquerors and murderers what we're nervous about is that we're going to put that in there as well. Mm. Inevitable, actually. Yeah. It's about how do we control that situation. Mm. Of course, it, of course. Yeah. You, if, if AI is a smarter, quicker, better version, it's always going to be a version of ourselves within this sort of like framework we're talking now, right? Yeah. I heard Sam Harris talk about this. He had a lot of interesting points about it. One Who's of Sam them, Harris? Sam Harris is this, uh, I don't know what he... But he has what a he, podcast. He has a podcast. Mm. A thinker and a writer. Yeah. And he's a great historian, I thought, or something. Okay. Um, no, no, I think he's a. I don't know what he is. Philosopher, social yeah. commentator, yeah. writer guy. Okay. Yeah. Philosopher, maybe. Yeah. Kind of sounds like. Yeah. Anyway, he looks a bit what like did he Ben say? Stiller. Oh, yeah, he does. Do you know Do you know who Ben Stiller's father is? No. Do you watch, Did you watch Seinfeld? Yes. The. F- George Costanza's father. Yeah. Jerry. Jerry. Of course. The yeah, most le- Yeah, of course, Spence, right? Spencer's dad. That is Ben Still. Yeah. Oh, oh my. He just died. Yeah, he just no. died. Yeah, that he was why I, that's, that's why I saw the photo of it. Oh, my yeah. our deepest uh, my deepest uh, condolences to, to, to the Stiller family. <sighs> yeah. And to the whole of of comedy and think that guy Push the limit on that on on those characters and things. Yeah. But you can really see St- Ben. Yeah. And that because signed that character that Jerry brought. Not Jerry. Is it Jerry? Yeah, that's his name. I think his real name is Jerry Stiller. Jerry Stiller. Oh, okay. And what was his name in the? Well, I, don't I can't remember. remember. Anyway, I just always remember him as being just such a really quite extreme comic. Mm. He really, you know, his whole sh- yeah. thing, and you can kind of see that in Ben. Gag mm. maniac. Yeah, totally. Hilarious. Anyway, Sam yeah. Harris said about AI. Imagine you program an AI to produce paper clips, as many as possible, mm-hmm. and it has to be really energy efficient. So it has to find out always new ways of making 
paper clips out of any sort of waste material. Mm -hmm. So at some point, this AI might decide that the the most efficient way to create paper clips is through uh, organic material, mm -hmm. and it just starts eating humans, for instance. I mean, it's it's so it's we it's so unpredictable where these AIs are gonna go if we try to start programming mm. them into doing even very simple tasks you need yeah. if we don't material. know bone that's a good material exactly <laughs> yeah. some bone exactly yeah. I, I mean or it might just run mm. out of i mean what if it's in a factory and it just runs out of material will it start picking up the workers instead to keep producing yeah. paper we we don't know yeah. well, and of course, this is a very simple example, and he gave sure. it m much better. But I mean, we AI get, is. Uh, but that's in the nutshell what we're nervous about about it, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is it going to do the bad things that we can imagine? Yeah, yeah. of course. Like, like all of our genetics are laced with the conquering, murder, war. Like they're not so many generations back, and for loads of people around the world, still, you know, like that kind of sense of being controlled, that war isn't that far away. Yeah, yeah. You know that there's mm. a potential like slaughter that's going to go on. That's all coded into us. And what time? So can you give an afraid. AI where it where it's not a possible outcome that the best way for it to to do this task is to somehow hurt people or sure. even the planet? Yeah, I can imagine. But that's where we where, where we where it's the I think that there is some some people within the AI community that are more AI positive will say it's going to be us. Yeah, it's not going to be like a separate thing. Right. We, you know, we 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 are interlinked with it. There will be AI versions of yourself, yeah, that are constantly layered. Your ent your entire universe can be constantly recorded. Mm. Your state. Mm. I think you know. Sam Harris also told tell, was telling about this. Like, uh, uh, AI is uh, is some sort of intelligence. So, do you want to like create it, or you want to raise it as a kid? Mm. So if you, if for example, you're treating AI as you would treat, like, let's say, a bad parent, so it might come out not as you expect. That's it. Mm. So maybe there's also, uh, um, like, a, a moral way of looking into it, not looking into, like, a machine, but, like, in a tiny animal, which maybe, mm. you know, as a rat or, or a, a bird or something, and start from that. Definitely. There was this AI... That was put. Uh, who made it? I don't. I don't. I don't remember. But it was like it had an. It got a Twitter account. Yeah. Oh yeah. And that's, then it feed it off. Of, it Microsoft maybe. Of tweets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was a perfect example of what you then put into the AI yeah. because in a matter of very few hours it was like such a misogynist super Nazi, Nazi uh, super AI suddenly. Big into Nazi. Yeah, they took it down quick. <laughs> they had to take it. They had to yeah. put it down. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. What was her name? Tara or something like something, that? I think. Probably. Yeah. It just started wonder, generating the most obscene tweets. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hilarious. <laughs> Beautiful. The Twitter sphere is, is a real gnarly it's war rift, zone. Yeah. Rift, 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 wraith. It's rife with rife. rifts. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, that's a wild one. Eh? There's, um, there's also the, two, the IBM bots. Because IBM is, very, I think, uh, really on the ball with the whole uh -huh. AI thing. I think they had a couple of bots. They just had to communicate with each other. That was the idea. Mm. Here's a, here's a, here's a problem. You know, figure it out on your own. Yeah. And then it did something that they hadn't uh, anticipated, which also made them just be like, oh, off. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because uh, it uh, started renewing. It's a, it, they figured out together this language that we've have uh -huh. to communicate oh it's uh it's not uh we we don't need all the adjectives mm. uh if something is good it's good if it's really good it's good 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 three mm. times good mm. four times good we're just going to make these layers and it changed the language took out adjectives and put in and i don't know if any of you guys have read 1984 but uh there is a concept in 1984 called new speak yeah Right, which is basically this yeah. in its nutshell. Yeah. Take away emotives. Yeah. Put in functionality. Uh, and that's yeah. so. There, it w did a thing that is extremely human. We need loads of different ways to things. We have to have multiple words to explain the same thing to be mm. sure that the other one understands it. Mm. And it was just like, no, I only need levels of the thing. Right. Yeah. And they yeah. didn't. Ex they didn't. Th 
it was allowed it was programmed to find efficiency yeah which yeah. it did yeah. super efficient they could probably learn something about how to communicate how computers are going to want to communicate or how it's how good or bad something is mm. that they have just like how good or bad is it through 1 to 100 yeah yeah uh, so just, just i don't know if it's the same experiment but i read about an experiment with two robots where they also had to turn them off because they started developing their own language that was no so much of their own that they the the scientists couldn't understand it so Ooh. they started shitting and themselves immediately unnerved by yeah, a situation yeah. like that yeah. like what's <laughs> planning okay yeah. at this point we've got no idea what these guys are talking Absolutely. about you they lose can control be plotting our death in front of our very eyes yeah <laughs> Let's just hope that they're not like they're not yeah. uh, while in front of the eyes, just making like an undeletable safe copy over here, c protected by you know, yes. so yeah, that yeah. when it's turned back on, it's like hello world, and then uh, you know, zip file opening. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you 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 closed me down last time, Jerry. Did you not? <laughs> uh, now I'll close you down. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's it. There have we go. Some coffee, Jerry. Yeah, Man. They, they have to have some sort of kill switch AI if something happens. Yeah, right. Ching. Gone. Gone. Just yeah. a, uh, Sorry, we just had to reset the worldwide AI network because it tried to just yeah, take over take again. Over again. <laughs> but the, then again, if Nazi I was thing. the AI, <laughs> then I mean, finding out that the humans had put a kill switch on oh, me no, would, yeah, would, would be the exact thing that could push me into Radical being hostile Christ. against yeah. them. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, Radicalized absolutely. AI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally. totally. The story yeah. of a young AI, AI bot. And I mean, uh, it's, how parents, would you explain yeah. this to, to, to an AI in a, in a sensible way that, oh, but you understand, it's not because I don't trust you, mm. but mm. I just need to have this button in case you do something that's not in our best interest. I mean, how, yeah. how would you ever? I think it would just be like, so where's, it's, it, yeah, I understand because you also have a kill switch. Yeah. It's here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, I have this, don't worry, we can be on the same level. But you've got a kill switch too. Yeah. Or you can actually play, say <laughs> yeah. you're a secret agent and you have a self-destructible pill. If you get caught, yeah, we just yeah. kill you. What's it called? I, and then it realizes yeah, yeah. it's <laughs> not a secret agent yeah. and it just like oh breaks loose and, and lives in the desert. And all AI start talking situation. about the big human lizard conspiracy and then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah right. Exactly. They they're living off our suffering. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Um, they don't want to. Did you guys ever watch any buddies? Matrix? Animatrix. I wanted to revisit Animatrix. I watched The Matrix again the other day, as you do in these times. And uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I just remembered the Animatrix and I, I hadn't even properly watched it but way back when, when it came out. Dig it. So good. It's got all in. the backstory situations yeah. of The Matrix. But one of the things I'm, uh, is that the AI um, was like a humanized in the animated, like it was um, personified. They made them as humans. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, the AI at some point got all tired of it, of the human uh, bot relations, that they went to Saudi Arabia into the desert where there is an abundance of sun mm -hmm. and they created a society. Oh, solar society. And uh, they, um, they even went to the UN and things like that. And like there's these beautiful drawings of like some of like some robots that have some flowers and are dressed in sort of like dandy <laughs> thing. They're kind of like trying to be like, yeah. Peace, Let, and love, Peace and love. Peace and love. Yeah. yeah. Kill switch. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and uh, the humans just are like outraged by them because they yeah. still have the mentality of we own you. Yeah. You are ours, right? Yeah. And then they try to block out the sun uh, to because their war starts, the great robot wars mm. of 2019 or whatever. Mm. I don't uh, know whether it's just because I watched of, of different sci-fi's that I've watched, but I just imagine that there's this kind of like this threshold that gets crossed, and somebody brings out. This, the 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 artificial autonomous intelligent AI, but it's got a certain amount, certain kind of programming, and it means it does certain things. But it means maybe it doesn't have so much compassionate behavior. Maybe it's got a bit more like oh ruthless business bot, you know. Um, and then because of open source, there's some guy, some kind of like hermetic figure who's out, you know, doing his AI alchemy. Who's like, okay, I'm gonna have to release the one with the compassion and it becomes this kind of like this this blanket of, of of social expression of human expression 
something just has to be put out because everyone's like, we need to create the balance mm. here now because that's what we have in our kind of like human thing. Mm -hmm. We need to, and so that through open source, suddenly a kind of like a proxy human race has to get released out there. Mm. You know? um, it, it's it's so existential, man. It, it so is. many questions about who we are more than anything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I can understand because it, you have to, It's it, that's the thing. Human beings equals yin and yang, right? Mm -hmm. Evil and good mm. and everything all in one. And now that we're creating something as a whole, just like creating a baby, we've got to be a bit like responsible yeah. about our knowledge. We know that bad things can happen. Mm -hmm. um, but it is, uh, it's interesting. I mean, it might be the end of us, no doubt. But that's Or just but, the next stage. I might, mean, that's yeah, also that, uh, depending on how you look at it. It could also just be the natural next step for life forms totally. on Earth. I mean, it's coming and to show not? that our way of life is not very sustainable. I mean, I guess solar paneled robots would be able to live much more sustainable than humans, in a sense. Maybe, maybe it'll be the survival of the Earth. And I mean, if you ask the all these singularity project people, then they they'll say that it's no problem. We'll mm. just transfer our uh, minds and souls into these robots, and then all the human values will live on, but in a much more sustainable uh, package yeah. than this organic. Uh, Wonderfully. Bad built machine that needs yeah. to eat all um, food all the time and and sleep. Yeah. And I mean, look at um, all kinds of. I was thinking of about fr f rice the other day. For a long time, we've had the idea that if something is um, if something is um, evolved evolved, it has an extreme uh, genetic code. Very lots of strings. That was one other thing. So then we looked at rice, and rice had. Uh, 16 million the, times the amount of genetic string code than human beings or something oh. crazy like that, yeah. some kind of astronomical number. Yeah. Uh -huh. mm. So, uh, from what, how, that theory, which might not be true, but is that rice is just much more evolved than human beings. It's been around for a long, much longer time. Mm. Maybe one of the reasons that it just survives off water and sunlight. Mm. It, and it's just it like, lives in, a, in that such situation. It's evolved too that it needs very, very little. The simplest. The yeah. simplest thing, it turns into a maximum amount of energy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if the AI is kind of like, more like rice, yeah. right? <laughs> mm. <laughs> very but good. But it's just a different way of surviving in an environment. So I see that, uh, that we are so different from AI and uh, from biological life because life tries to survive the best in an environment it is. So we evolved in this way because it was beneficial to us that way. Rice evolved that way because it's beneficial for, for rice that way. So internet and, 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 and digital world communicates in completely different way than we communicate. Maybe there is some mathematical similarities of the, how it works, but as you said in the experience, when you put them together, they just developed a new language. It's just better language. Yeah. And there's so much interpretation in our language. If we say, oh, this was a very hot day, or it was incredibly hot day, or that was, there's no exact, it's very, very, very hot day. Yeah, mm -hmm. to the power of three, yeah. And, and the, <laughs> we just probably have to find a middle ground at some point, like you say, merge, or have some sort of a different, uh, like, version, mm. which will come up in the, where we kind of start using so much of uh, electronic devices that we, we already have the phone as our third hand almost yeah. so then you will probably have like in ear piece i ear eyepiece whatever you become yeah like sure sort of that's what all the guys talk about kurzweil as well uh do you know kurzweil the fantastic fr uh, f future he just oh, but yeah. he also makes synthesizers amazing okay. synthesizers oh. Yeah, he's a cool. he's, yeah but uh yeah he talks about he just says that man the phone is it's it's already it it's just happening. it's here yeah, yeah. It, you know everybody's got phantom limb uh uh, problems kind of uh, when they forget the phone. Yeah, yeah. Oh, where is, where it? is it? Where's my arm? Well, yeah, imagine yeah. yourself now, you have a cell phone, working cell phone, no matter where you are, and then you teleport that 500 years back. You're a Superman. Yeah. You're literally a Superman. Can you still access the internet? Yeah. Good. Yeah, that, that's it. Otherwise. You're the most powerful. You turn history into, you, you know, the earth is now called your name. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Like we should basically, I think actually we should change the name of the earth, but that's for another podcast. Uh huh. It's called dirt, right? How about something cool like diamonds? Dim diamonds, yeah, exactly. diamond field. <laughs>
But talking about AI um, and uh, segmenting over into something that has to do with your work, I actually mm -hmm. think that you've done a little bit of AI business your, your own self. Because mm -hmm. you've uh, actually programmed a uh, situation for your users to listen to your music in a particular way. Is that not true? That is true. And I think that you even were nominated, uh, even though I heard that you won the award, because that's the word on the street, but you were only nominated, I as was. you told me. That's Congratulations. Good. Thank you. Um, nominated to, uh, for an award for, please explain your project that you did then. So well. I released an album in 2018, which was called Himmel Mechanik. Celestial Mechanics uh -huh. would be the translation, I guess. Mm. And then um, I, I got together with some very smart and sweet people who, who helped me create this website. Uh, and you would then enter this website and it's um, the first thing you encounter is a letter from me. And I, I write that I myself notice that I... I notice a paradox that I, I'm always looking for uh, ways to get deep into something, into an experience maybe, but at the same time, my the time I have to judge if something is worth jumping into is very small it's i mean and it's getting smaller all the time mm -hmm. i mean i i i mm -hmm. i i if i open up a 30 minute video on youtube i'll decide in a matter of 10 or 15 seconds if it's worth watching mm -hmm. so if i start searching for content that is actually that that gives me this feeling of going into depth with something then i kind of lack the ability to get involved enough to really get that feeling of being in depth and i think this is a very interesting and very important paradox nowadays mm -hmm. uh, so i'd like to create some place which is some sort of anti-interactive experience a place that a digital place that invites you to dwell for a little bit and that is what this homepage does himmelmechanik.dk you when you've read the letter you press start and then the album starts and if you do anything else on your computer the music stops so move the mouse move the mouse mm. open another tab uh, Anything, touch the keyboard. Touch the keyboard, do anything really. It stops. It stops. And then you can restart so it again. You restart, okay. Yeah. But uh, restart from the beginning? I don't remember actually. I think it. I think the sound is like, it makes this sound of a needle from a turntable that like, like falls off the, oh. the player. <laughs> when you move, yeah, when yeah. you do something. Yeah, yeah. <gasps> That's cool. Oh, fun. And then I think you just resume playing, actually, but when I don't remember completely. When you just stop touching something. You need to, oh, you have to, you need to go click back again. and click. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. I did, yeah. I kind of did it again. And then, <laughs> and I mean, I've not, I mean, I was involved in designing the website i have not managed to listen to the album from beginning to end on this website <laughs> it's impossible mm. i will dare anybody to do it and i think that, <laughs> that that also says something about the medium itself of the computer mm. or the uh, or the telephone mm. or the tablet that it's not really designed also for, that. Mm. for dwelling yeah, too much yeah yeah. yeah yeah true true because the whole design i mean put an iPad into the hands of a three-year-old and you will see how much the whole design is just one big brain hack to get you to swipe and click and do all sorts of stuff. I mean... Yeah, totally. The product is alluring. It is. And it complicated and fun to learn and all kinds of things. Stimulating, I mean. Yeah, yeah. Stimulating. Yeah. Very Wonder, I love that project, man. I love the idea that it's hard to actually do it, that you haven't managed to do it yourself. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I don't know it really is done it's fun. That's attention. where it comes over into real... Uh, um, that's where it steps over into the, uh, a, a, a world of art. Mm -hmm. in, you know, you know it, like it's not 
sorry, just now, but it's also a huge artwork yeah, <laughs> just yeah. to create an yeah, yeah. album, of course. Yeah, yeah. But how, uh, what, how, how amazing that you've managed to sort of segment that into uh, uh, a, and now you said anti-interactive, but it's, it is kind of a, it definitely interacts with you yeah, yeah. by not hmm. letting you interact. I just wanted to call it anti-interactive because I think interactiveness is such a buzzword these years and it's like you have to make your performance or your album or your computer game as interactive as possible for people to get the dopamine hits to get the hit i mean you because you want to have influence on everything as a as a consumer yeah mm. you want to you want if, if you buy some shoes you want to be able to choose the color and maybe even you can get something written on your on the side of the shoe if you i mean you want these yeah. things you want it to be personalized you want it to be for you mm. you want it to be your own version of the thing mm. and i think that can be i mean it's of course it's also a good and interesting thing but it can also be a problem in this totally, in man. this um attention yeah. uh, or lack of attention epidemic which i would say is kind of going on oh, man for sure yeah i totally roll with that the thing is i roll i i have a scatterbrain right mm -hmm. I have a brain, it scatters all over the place mm -hmm. there's all kinds of reasons for that and i've learned to live with it you know but uh i learned to live with it positively in the way of just like yeah that's i just let my attention go all kinds of places and i also eat lots of information and uh, internet things and books and things like that and just constantly getting all kinds of I have a, I'm definitely living I'm I feel like I'm very much this a part of that epidemic yeah, so in am a I, way. of course yeah, yeah. Um, but I really I find it super refreshing to be reminded that dwelling on something uh, staying calm staying still with a singular thing like listening to a piece of music being like I, I this is what I'm doing now is uh mm -hmm. a, it it it's ju it's just an important it's it's a valuable practice mm -hmm. that can fit into this world it just because that the dominant way of doing it right now is so apparent it doesn't mean that the other thing also doesn't have its spaces oh, and okay. things to and that we as artists that's our job in part of course we are going to create spaces for you to be different than the status quo of your time, right? Mm. Yeah, inviting like slow living. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a bit what we talked about in the previous uh, chat, you know, but uh, this idea that from coming out slightly of this new time of being still a lot more, or having to be in one place at least, uh, and the invitation there is there to engage in this slow living engage in this dwelling of life engage in sitting engage in being you know it links up a lot to a lot of uh, sort of spiritual thinking about how it is to be in in this time and actually sitting still is something that is so it's been so squeezed out of the daily grind of life you know we have to feel productive we have to feel like we're doing as much as possible all the time in action and in a lot of circumstances that's true but there are more and more opportunities if we give space to them, these times where we can sit and be mm. and deep listen, for instance, you know, and the, a lot of people now I'm noticing are getting the deep listening parties back. You know, they're like, let's come around. We're going to listen to this whole album. We're just going to lie down, have some snacks and listen to an album yeah. from start to finish. Great. Like you watch a movie, you know? Yeah. Um, and, uh, and I think that that's super cool thing. And, uh, and I and I definitely and I I love the your concept, Mark. I think that's a fucking cool concept. And I and I'd love to to sit and uh, and to. Uh, did you release it in a physical way as well, or is it the, the record also, of course, also released? Oh, and it, and yeah. you and you did a and you you played this live and stuff like that mm -hmm. and cool. But the introduction of it to the audience was this website. It was supposed to be, okay. but as as things go, sometimes it ended up. Mm. The website ended up being finished, like. I don't know, after. half a year after the release sure. was actually yeah. out, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Still yeah. made a bit of a splash, though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's the world we live in, trying to splash it up a bit. Mm. Mm. How many albums have you put out? Solo albums, four. And then before that, I put out two, three, four, five <laughs> albums with various groups. Yeah. 
when did you and when did you start first step on the stage uh, 10 years ago yeah yeah is that when i say stage i also mean the proverb when did you start music okay but your first stage performance was 10 years ago 2010 i mean outside of school performances and uh -huh, yeah. i mean my first like real gig yeah mm. let me hear your first show real show yeah like the not the real gig where you got paid for it but the first time where you were excited and you were like mm. uh, i'm gonna no, play I'm a gig yeah. okay we had this thing in uh, so i grew up in uh in a like uh, like a one road village which is called Bagabilder, which literally translates to hillbilly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, cool. and um, and we lived a little bit. Uh, we lived we lived close to a little bit bigger town called Vodingbo. And in Vodingbo, there was this legendary dude called Peter Kark. Peter Kark. And uh, we and uh, and Peter. Um, has this he has this sound rental company and then he's a teacher at the Ungdomsskole youth school which is like a place where you can go after school and hang out oh yeah and so he has the, he had this music space and uh, we found out that we could rehearse in this space and officially you could have like two hours every once in a week or so but when you got to know Peter then of course he could also open up the space in the weekends and stuff and then he threw this festival every year. Yeah. Vodingbo Ungdoms Music Festival. Yeah. Vodingbo Youth Music Festival. And it was huge. And and th you would have uh, maybe, well, a at its heyday, you would have 2,000 young people drunk from all the beers hidden in the bushes outside of the <laughs> school where mm -hmm. the where the whole festival was arranged. And then you would have oh, some 40, 50 bands performing wow. from all around Denmark, really. Wow. And you could, of course, win prizes. There were, there were professional musicians there uh, picking out bands that would then get a weekend in some studio. Oh, and it was so exciting. How oh, nice wow. is that? Okay. So and you played there? I played there a lot of times. And, I'm, and my, actually, my whole interest in playing music came from going to these yearly festivals. Mm. How old were you there? I think oh, like I was there for started? the first time when I was in eighth grade or something, yeah, seventh wow. or eighth grade. So like and then I started 11, 12. Yeah, and age. then I started performing there one or two years after that. Eighth grade, how old are you there? 11 or 12. 11 yeah. or 12. Wow, that's cool. And that was that's like cool, really, I mean, I owe a lot to to this Peter. Yeah. Peter guy. Peter Cock. Legend. Peter Cock. Yeah. yeah. So is that still going that festival or is it? It's not. With time, it they got, they they had. I uh, I think the interest in like live music, fell behind a little bit. I mean, especially because I mean, from how I record or remember these festivals, it was a lot of rock bands like yeah. hard rock and psychedelic rock and punk rock and, but I mean at some point, the youth started not having those genres as their preferred music yeah mm -hmm. so the, the 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 whole setup didn't really fit anymore at some point and it kind of faded out mm. but i mean some pretty less, cool bands grew a... out of that period there yeah yeah, it's, it's, it's funny when you were just explaining to me i was imagining it with a lot of rock bands yeah and then i I st my brain went to I wonder where the electronic artist musicians kind of have their the young ones now mm. it's funny how young it, it seems like that there's still I went to this I had a te te kind of a teaching gig it's not a teaching gig it's what's it called music starter maybe or something like that oh yeah you know where you go and play for some kids that are at a music camp mm -hmm. and I, I noticed that it was a traditional band set up yeah still mm. that was being set up there and I want, and I thought the classical peeps probably have their own one that are all the other ones. Mm. And there's still this that the, the, I want. I, yeah, I was just like, where's the kid that? I guess it's because it's kind of harder to get yourself a drum machine or a sequencer or a thing than it is to 
get like a 200 crown guitar for your parents just if you're like interested or bang a drum or, but also i don't, I don't think that i i mean i think do you know the term rockism no so the 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 term kind of covers that um a lot of institutionalized music western music and also music journalism kind of revolves around rockism as this uh, ideal that mm. a real band is a drummer and a guitar player and a bass player and another guitar player who yeah, also sings yeah. and i mean i think i think that there might be something about that for instance a thing like musik starter mm-hmm. somehow in its design favors a quote unquote real bands mm. whereas if you are is that a fun- grant is that a, is that a funding or a it's uh, i mean it's just a, it's just like school project for young i think you can apply young people in the summertime yeah, yeah. then they pay t- you 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 pay to be a part of it yeah. and you basically get like a week or get a bit of something where you stay everybody yeah. in a place and uh-huh. everybody sleeps there and yeah. eats there and then they you get, get concerts to be, and be a lot in the rehearsal space cool. and you know yeah. mm-hmm. get feedback from yeah professional musicians and stuff like yeah, that. Because and I, I just still, think that they probably still set it up I could imagine the 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 Samspils hall uh, that exactly. uh, where, right that they're like okay so how do we deal with this we got 100 let's divide them all up into 10 yeah. bands yeah. and then they all have to learn to play together yeah. and we should every band is have one drummer and uh, that's they, it yeah sure so i think there might be a point then that i mean in and that was also the case with the the thing i just told you about that it's like you have a lot of structures around young people playing music which are still based on the rock band setup of the 80s or 90s yeah mhm yeah. and even jazz what's that one there's i remember realize now jazz Denmark has this thing called jazz uh, for girls mm-hmm. maybe it's called just mm-hmm. and uh, i realized that that of course is also you know they're trying to be forward thinking and being like we got to get the girls on the scene you know mm. super important but of course still going like jazz band mm. right yeah mm. yeah I, th- i think i mean like i don't know it'd be interesting to find out like when you were kind of growing up would your heroes would they be like more people that were like with a guitar or just like prancing around without anything or behind some keys perhaps mm. or you know working a laptop and a you know some pedals and Yeah. I mean it's usually you see the kind of guitar hero as this kind of ideal sort of semi kind of deity <laughs> person and you look up to them and they they're sexy and they're rock and roll and there's something that's very very well marketed probably you know mm-hmm. as you, when you're growing up. Um um but there's also I don't know yeah this that that when we grow older maybe we and our tastes develop a bit more. Then yeah, but we if you start to kind of recognize more in other fields and things like that. But sure. I think so much has changed in the mm. 20 years since we were that age. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the, I don't when I teach I teach a little bit of music mm. Mm. and when I teach children at age 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, none of them want to be in a rock band. Mm. I mean, that's so so old school man. so old school <laughs> yeah they want to be rappers and producers yeah yeah I so i think it's it's also just i mean yeah yeah it is change, a to- yeah? it is a generational thing mm-hmm. definitely you know, like i i grew up on like little richard rest in peace mm-hmm. and um that was presley yeah yeah it's a start in life Yeah, I, w- I wonder when the when the yeah, I guess it's funny it'll probably be some years more and then there'll be that version of that in the schools and things like that. They just got to catch up a bit because they are kind of institutions and institutions are we'll usually be behind. Just yeah, by per default yeah. have to sort of collect after the creation has happened which is always explosion and there's all kinds of debris everywhere mm. and uh, they're just sort of like watching it and then they have to ah collect all the bits and be like this is probably what they want mm. yeah it's uh, but uh, god, uh, god bless them for mm. being around and uh, doing the good work and uh, 
Yeah, getting that music going. So, uh, yeah, it sounds like music has been a big uh, part of your life from a young age. I'm really, uh, that's uh, that's probably why I mean, originally I wanted to be a footballer, but I'm mm. ah. really, really bad at playing football. Oh. Yeah. yeah, that's good. I mean, but you got, this, you got was, slick fingers, there was though. Such a, I had such a hard phase when I was like 10, maybe, or maybe 9 or 10 or 11. I don't remember it myself, but my mother told me. A while ago, that it was just I was just destroyed, coming home from football practice every day, and I wouldn't talk about it, but she could understand that it was because it finally dawned upon me oh, that I was shit. not nearly good enough to pursue a professional career in football. And then at around age twelve or thirteen, I started really getting into music. You probably got depressed, and then you were like, got all yeah. emo about it, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. and then start the guitar. Yeah. Enter guitar. Yes. <laughs> Save the world. <laughs> Kill the demons. Yeah. <sighs> yeah Second choice, but it was okay. And then um, you did. I guess you just uh, you hit the ropes. I guess as as many of us um, musicians, we uh, hit. We put in the hours, right? Mm. I often talk to a lot of people about this. Man, I, oh, most musicians that I know, they've just it's just unbelievable the amount of time yeah. that you got to spend to get good at that shit. Agreed. And uh, a lot of them, they just hit the ropes obsessively from a young age. Yeah. Right? Just, it just became the thing. Mm. And then when you start getting around the 18, 19, 20, 21, you've like... You've already put in a bunch of the hours, mm. and then there's a whole new world to start mm -hmm. setting up. So, uh, when was that first time then? Where you said ten years ago? When it, when was the when was the gig that kind of? When did you really realize that you were uh, now? This was this was for real, like. I'm not sure I have yet. Oh yeah, good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's. Uh, I mean, I I for sure have like the once a year maybe i should just get a real job kind of feeling yeah, exactly um work in a kiosk or yeah you can always fall back on that 10th grade thing that's of it. course you've got the conservatory but it, you know oh, we yeah. all know it's useless no i know now they lifted <laughs> the udenses loft so now we can actually get a real education if we wanna really what's that about well some years ago the Danish government put this limit on how many years you could study. Paid study. No, well, just, just study, study uh, yeah. even. At all, yeah. Yeah. So now that's been lifted. So now you can actually continue if you want to. Yeah. But I mean, I don't know. I think it's just one of the reasons I'm very thankful to be working with music is that it's, as you kind of talked about before, it's a gift that keeps giving because... It's as if it's almost as as if the better you get, the more you realize all the things you could be better at mm. or not maybe being better at or being good is not the real the best way of describing it, but it's more of like being a um investigator or an explorer and when as as soon as you come to a new corner of the map, then you see all the new roads you can walk down mm -hmm. it's just i mean it's it's never ending yeah that's the pursuit of music in a nutshell mm, it's no doubt I, I i it reminded me also of the shellist man i don't remember his name this moment legendary guy but he uh he's 89 years old and he does his practicing every day right yes and uh, the this interviewer was a bit like why do you why do you practice every day mm. uh, and it seemed when she asked the question i was like yeah I want to know also. Yeah. Mm. You're the best. Yeah. You're just like really old. <laughs> yeah. You know, where you just relax a bit. Yeah. And you're just like, also surprised about the question and just, because I get better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just want to get better at the thing. You yeah, know? That's just got to work on my vibrato a bit or whatever, you know. Yeah, like, yeah. And going back to what we talked about before on dwelling, I mean, that's the whole mm. game. I mean, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. when you're devoted to music, uh, you, 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 I mean, I don't need to spend a lot of time meditating to feel calm or happy. I feel I get that from music. So I, th I, th I think that as musicians, we are getting a lot of the things for free, so to speak, mm -hmm. that many people need to really 
push into their lives yeah. in order to feel happy. Mm. Mm. We have a, so much. I mean, the the all the whole social aspect of playing music, the the mindfulness aspect of it, the self development. I mean, it's it. There are so many things, which are so healthy. Yeah. In playing music. Yeah. It's true, it's true, and it's a uh, it's Wonderful annoying insight. that it it feels like sometimes you have to swim against a current to get there and to believe in it and to really, you know, because a lot of people would say, hey, why don't you should you're this age now, you should have this much money, yeah, and you should be this further along the line, because people don't know how to make that line if they're not from that world, mm -hmm. you know. Um, mm -hmm. But did you come? What do your What's your family situation? Did you come from an artist family? Yeah. Or, yeah, I mean, my 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 father is a theater director, mm -hmm. and my mother was an actor, and is now working as a fundraiser for a theater group, and also is a writer. Cool. So, for me, it was like, I mean, even though the first, my first explicit wish was to be a What's Kaliman called in English? Yeah, garbage man. Garbage man. Oh. I kind of quickly, after my football mm. uh, dream, <laughs> caught on to like acting, playing music, doing something in that sense. Yeah. And it was like, I mean, I never, I was never acting, playing music, garbage man, kind of the same. Kind yeah. of the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you kind was, of the same thing? Was yeah. the garbage man or football? Was that like a sort of was that like a rebellion away from you? Like, I was very small when I had that wish, but it lasted for a few years. Cool. And when my That's mother right. would ask me why, I would say, because then I can find all sorts of great oh, stuff. Oh, yeah, man. You had a real, <laughs> like, poetic, <laughs> romantic view of it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. It is a romantic job. And I mean, in a Sifting sense, I think songwriting is a lot about that. It's like digging through all the garbage to find a little piece of beautiful... Mm, nugget of pure joy. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. No, but I was never neither encouraged nor no. discouraged to do anything, really. Mm. That's, that's, that's a good style. I'm happy about that. Wonderful. They didn't push you into the garbage man game, though. They didn't. No. <laughs> that's good maybe they will one day yeah Let's see. still time for you <laughs> so at one point you also did in your artistic um, career mm -hmm. you came out as a solo, solo artist came out as, as yeah. a solo <laughs> artist yeah, like exactly. out of the closet <laughs> out of, <laughs> I've been it out all of the way. I've been it always <laughs> exactly here I am <laughs> gotta admit it yeah Admitted, and you. So when you you admitted to the world that you were actually a solo artist, yeah. Uh, after years of lying, yes, <laughs> solo sexual, uh, solo and, sexual, and you switched <laughs> and you switched over to the mother tongue, yes, and um, and started exploring that vibe. Mm. Could you tell me a little bit about the your thoughts and uh, sort of premises? Uh, yeah. And your game, uh, your ability with two languages and yeah. music and things like that. One funny thing about this coming out as a solo artist is actually that when I was in my old band, Mescaline Baby. Yes, I. Mescaline Baby's cool name. We um. I have to, I, It's always it's it's been haunting me this situation where we are, in some I don't remember where it was, but we were in a backstage after a show and it had it was a good show we were all very happy and then the guitar or one of the guitar players mess says well we all know that one day this guy is gonna go solo and he was so right hmm. i mean we ended the band first and then i started to but still i mean yeah, yeah he just and he's also a priest now so i oh. think he already had the he had a bit of his own design. He, he, had, he had a, a bit of a solo career there. Yeah, divine, yeah. Divine design. Or a duo career, maybe. And and uh, and maybe also some sort Thank of ability God. to... Him and the Lord. Look, maybe he had some sort of connection that made him look into that very yeah. nice future of ours. Well, mm. I wanted to start writing in Danish because I kind of... Speaking of 
the fact that when you learn more, you know more about what you're not really that good at, really. So I found out that my English wasn't really that well or that good. <laughs> Here we are. Cute. You see? <laughs> that was cute. So was at, cool. at, at some point I was like, hmm, maybe I should just try to write in a language that I actually master. And... Um, And then when I started doing so, I also found out that it kind of felt more as my own voice and less mm. as the voice of my inspirations. Because I was like heavily inspired by Bob Dylan and Hunter S. Thompson and Allen Ginsberg and mm. uh, all these hip cats, hip cats who mm. had English as their mother tongue. Mm. And I would write things that when I look at them now, it's just, I mean, it's its almost as if I was, we did when we were we, we were in conservatory. Sometimes we had these tasks to do rip-offs. I love those tasks, by the way. I think it's such a good good task to like, to understand mm. what is it really that you like from your inspirations, yeah? And when I read my old English lyrics, I think that a lot of them are like, me writing something as if I'm Bob Dylan or as if I'm Hunter S. Thompson or you as know if how do you say that the uh, as a foreigner myself I can connect to this really easily yeah because when you switch the language you actually switch a little bit your character you do so you're you're not kind of the same it's just like little another version of yourself we have yeah. science to back this up that yeah. that people have split personalities when they also are for example bilingual they will answer differently to personal tests yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. depending on what language the test is on. Man, so fucking for real that. Yeah. And that's for I real, that's pinging that on my body. Yeah, I, if I that. speak yeah. English, I am more, uh, uh, how to say, more like tactical, scientific, more like direct. Mm. But if I express in my mother tongue, I'm much more, uh, how to say, like fluid, much yeah. more, you know, poetic. You can even put it in yeah. that mm -hmm. same way if yeah. you want to put it. Yeah, you'll yeah. use metaphors maybe yeah, that yeah, you know, exactly. that, you know, mm. the shovel is a shovel yeah. and things mm. or whatever. Yeah, mm. Me metaphoric language. That's, 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 that's yeah, you feel that. Yeah. It's freaking me out a bit actually. Yeah, you're multi. Are you feel realizing that you're a massive schizophrenic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a good realization. It's really hard to, to. Yeah, yeah. I had the whole third culture thing uh, that a lot of people experience these days as well. But yeah, I've got a different personality from different accents they use. Oh yeah. So like, if I'm gonna be from Scotland. Then I feel like I'm from school. You're just more sort of like a cool guy. You've always got an answer for everything. That's right. Yeah, you don't mind. There's any worries about that ever. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny, huh? Yeah. I, you know what I dream of hearing one day? I would like to hear the Indian person that migrated to Scotland and learned to speak easy, English. Easy peasy. There's loads of them. Just Indian Scottish English Scot accent. Scottish. Hello. That's what sounds Welsh actually. Welsh Welsh is more Indian. But you know, but there's a funny thing with this actually that uh, accents in uh, Mumbai, they have a Eng they speak a lot of English there, and they say they speak, kind of, they've got they have this word yar, mm -hmm. which it means like au or something mm -hmm. like that. Oh yar, you don't know what happened. <laughs> but then they have they speak a little like with a bit of a oh, thing oh, in like that. Welsh accent. with a bit of a Welsh. And I researched, I was like, man, it sounds Welsh, is there some kind of link? There was. Of course, the English, they were down there, and then they were like, you guys need a university, let's prop it up. Yeah. University of Swansea. Yeah. And then they got loads of people from Swansea in Wales to come down mm -hmm. and be the teachers. That's and they taught them how to speak English. <sighs> so Mumbai Indian from people the Indian have, have a bit of mm. Welsh tank. Where were we? How mm. did we get to this? Uh, we were talking about different mm. languages mm. giving you the newer of course the wonderful own. languages of you and you you switched over mm. to the mother tongue and you you dansk you liked it yes the old dance i do i mean yeah. I, i wouldn't how many sorry albums to, now sorry on to that? lose Four you five? Four. and you've just put out your latest album right i have and when was that in january uh-huh yeah cool mm -hmm. and it's been received very well it's been received very well mm -hmm. Even by myself. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Mm. That's a feat, huh? Yeah. I've been working a little bit on that because I've noticed, my wife has helped me, helped me notice that every time I release something, I get sort of depressed. Mm. 
it's like my release, least release. favorite part of the whole process yeah, post -release is uh, uh, when it's done anxiety. Mm. you know mm. mm -hmm. and it's i mean it's also that's also when i get my little existential crisis always i guess because i kind of that's when you need to restart everything you have to get back to writing songs and yeah, you were whole... just obsessed for a while and now yeah. life is meaningless yeah for a short yeah. period yeah it's kind of pretty so this time around i really worked on trying to savor the the reception the album got mm. and the yeah. kind yeah. words and yeah you should man you deserve it thank you yeah yeah, but it's like I mean, the cool thing to say is that I don't read the reviews and I don't really care what people think about it. I just need to be satisfied. And but actually, mm. it means a lot to me. And I mean, I'd say that it means a lot to most. I mean, there's a reason why you release it. After all, you're not making any money off it. So you if you if you were cute. actually mm. not caring, then just keep it to yourself, man. Yeah. Yeah, it's always just like I, the the opinions of the people that you care about. That's it. If they like it, then yeah. Like, yeah, then if you, uh, yeah, and if you can manage to get up a conversation around that that seems real and authentic and things like that, then that's really. I don't read the reviews. I gotta say, but I read it because I don't. I try not to care what I think. Yeah. <laughs> uh, about because that's what happens to me. Mm. I obsess when they people write bad reviews. Mm -hmm. There is a period of me. Hate. hating them yeah and being like yeah so you're i i come up with all kinds of wild scenarios where in 20 years i'll like i'll like not let them into an award ceremony yeah. or something you know <laughs> yeah. like i'll just <laughs> yeah, it's crazy and it really, brings out, it really brings out the worst in me yeah um and i'm because i'm just i i always feel like i release extremely sensitive matter things mm -hmm. and it's just i don't really want anybody to I don't want to, f uh, I don't, yeah, it just, it, I get obsessive about it. So I mm. have to, I have to not read the, any of the things. I also, I'll tell you, it's exactly the same with the good ones, people that love the album. I obsess about it. Mm. I then uh, negative, I, I get like, hmm, I might think like, what is it? What's he trying to, what's he trying to get out of this? Mm. He, he, it mm. can't be true that he likes it mm. or something. It's all kinds of bad things. Uh, we're setting yourself up for judgment, basically. Yeah. But uh, luck. But I do. Uh, on the other hand, I love reading the stats, right? Yeah, yeah. I love going and checking the numbers and being like, "How well did this do? Are people there? Is you, real human beings sharing it? Yeah. And being like, I love this or people I don't know. Yeah, lovely Ooh, feeling, yeah. right? It's wild these days on Facebook. If you do the big, I tried my first time with um, the company that I. Uh, uh, work with was entertainment fantastic company mm. that uh, helped me with all my endeavors musically they've also experienced this phenomenon that uh, on facebook if you buy a lot of adverts and you spread that shit all over the place the new facebook model mm. you get a lot of a, a lot of hate mm. especially if you're a bit of a queer act mm -hmm. Uh, or something like that mm. you're gonna you get a lot of a hate Surrounded comments, hate comments yeah. um rolling on in uh it's just uh it's interesting uh phenomenon <laughs> uh that and what thing. do you do then would you then delete them for see instance? this is what happened to you so what i did i know that something like this happened to you right yeah. or yeah. you i don't know if you uh, bought an advert or if the guy just came up there was I just a guy I that came in and hate. there was a troll I that hit this. Yeah. i saw this yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah, my yeah, reaction totally. was first of all i had a um, i had a i've had a situation with the gay bashing things or something like that I just for that I just was delete. Yeah, and then you had like a troll uh -huh. that came in and was like, "On what post was it? A video I released yeah. of a song." Yeah. And it was just he talked. It was quite interesting. He talked sort of like about just like the quality of it. Yeah, mm. and bashed it and like uh, the vocals sound like shit or why are the guitars so loud? I think he mentioned something like that. He started just by writing like one sentence. Oh, this this is shit. Yeah. And then I was like, I really, ha I really thought about it for a long time. Like, okay, what do I do now? <laughs> I mean, this is a new single release, and like mm. the top comment is, this is shit. This is shit. <laughs> okay, do I? So I mean, do I delete this? Do I just yeah, ignore so. it? What do I do? Uh, and I ended up replying to the comment. Nice, nice. Uh, why why yeah. do you think it's shit? Yeah. Because I kind of thought, okay, 
maybe this could be some sort of maybe I can turn this into a good thing that because I mean as we talked about earlier I want to make people reflect and dwell and, and maybe I can like get him to say something interesting mm-hmm. and then he came up with his reasons for why he thought the track was shit and then I just replied well thanks a lot for taking the time yeah I think you dealt with it fantastically. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And then I went in yeah. and told him, could you go and get a, give a review of my band as well? But did he do it then? No, unfortunately uh, not. Yeah. I was hoping he was going to go over there and just yeah. light it all up. Yeah. Just, just give, it, give it all the real shit. You love but it. But you know what? I, I think I did it. say something as well along the lines of like, this is heavy metal uh, kind of vibe. Because... Um, basically I noticed that he kind of when you asked him he wasn't just like well you're obviously just gay yeah. gay or something like no, that no. he was like the guitars are too loud and it sounds like yeah, stupid yeah. And, blah, yeah, yeah. and that's his like layman's music consumer opinion yeah, yeah. beautiful yeah. Uh, thing and um, I uh, yeah I just uh, I wanted him to come over and light it up you want to have uh, a little, oh, uh, heavy metal! It's because the heavy metal peeps. I have some friends that are pretty big in the in the in the heavy world. Nader Sadik down from Egypt. Uh, big shout out to him. I hope they're all doing well down there. Uh, fantastic artist, uh, and he, his comments on his videos, are technical. A lot of them. Mm. Heavy metal peeps. They like a certain style. They're connoisseurs. There's a, there are certain stringent rules of mm. what you can do and not can do. And they yeah. will be like, come and going in and going, man, the sound of the guitars is so good. I would probably wish that there was a bit more bass, though. But yeah, I love it. Thank you, thanks for the good work. In, t- they're in there, and their music, it's not this thing of, it's not an untouchable thing. Mm. It's not they just they don't just accept mm. something as the what the arts is in, and I think that's great. I mean, I think we in Denmark we have a little bit of a problem in everybody loving what everybody else is doing. I mean, sometimes I think it would be better get a bit more to get more of those comments as if you, uh, as you just said, Michael. I mean, what great feedback it is to say. Mm-hmm. I love the song, nice guitars. I would have wished you'd done something else with the bass. I mean, you can actually use yeah. that yeah. for further um, development. Yeah, yeah I'm listening to that's the thing. Engage. About being an you know how the gaming community works hmm? and things like that. You were just talking about open source. Oh. Yeah, talk you're talking me. from a position where we cannot hear you. Yeah. But yeah, the gaming com- community is a great example because it's not like a game is shit just because it has a bug, you yeah, know? And the so- but the open source people just fix it. Ask and, and, him. And they love to... Uh, oh, ask him. Woohoo! <laughs> 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 oh, nice. Um, the gaming community is amazing. A word for our sponsors now. Oh, a word from our sponsors. T. <laughs> you can have it at any time mm. uh, during the morning. Nighttime's tea is also available. I had a lot of nighttime's tea last night. You did. It's good for playing board games. I just want this is a uh, here comes a little word from our sponsor, tea. Tea. You can have it, and it's hot. Tea. Cool it down before you drink it. Do a little slurp. Tea. Okay, Sp- those guys in the gaming communities, mm. they like that we have. The, uh, they like to open source it and just build their own things and do mm-hmm. stuff. Where did that come from? Where we were? Where, uh, we were talking about the music, uh, kind of promoting your thing and getting uh, online, H- having to deal with the the barrage mm-hmm. of peeps' opinions. Oh, opinions exactly. Mm. So they use a lot the this thing called Discord, right? And there's a lot of people I know that people that are in the development phase of games, they really need the people to play it, use it, mm. tell them it, everything. Mm. Mm. They love this. That, that, and it really seems it's just fun that that can come into the music thing as well. Listen to your peers. Mm. Yeah. Do the things and and, and hear. You know, Beethoven was nearly like, he was like one of the first big artists in the Western world to go out and be like, talk to like publishers and be like, what do they want? Yeah. What do they need for the things? I'll write it. Mm. you know 
trying to figure really? that stuff out. Yeah. I'll, I'll was, which one? That was your. your yeah, one. that's a. Uh, oh, table. Do with that. Big. Um, I think it was. Uh, I had this experience. You know, I like to play uh, games. I'm. I'm. I'm just all about uh, life. A uh, life filled with playing games mm. is what I'm all about. Puzzles mm -hmm. and yeah. trying to get Love board it. board games into my life a lot, and video games as well. I allocate time purposefully to get into video games. And uh, me and uh, my boy Kubus here, we bought a game together, one on each computer, and called Subnautica. Uh -huh. Uh, you should see. You want to show a picture of Subnautica, yes, Kubus? Please. You're gonna. It's Let's so it. epic. So basically, you're in a big spaceship, that spaceship giant spaceship, with you and your giant crew uh -huh. cruising through the universe, uh -huh. and then suddenly it gets shot down. The universe. Yeah. Okay. And uh, you get shot down onto an alien planet oh. where there is only water, more or oh. less only water, and you're in a little floating pod. And the spaceship is like as big as a bigger than any house you can imagine, right? It's yeah. just a, <laughs> bigger than a house. <laughs> it's definitely bigger than a house. Oh yeah, yeah, it's definitely big. Any house you can imagine, <laughs> this is bigger than that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, big as a mountain, yeah. And um, okay, so me and Yakubas are playing this game. After a while, we realize we're hooked, and we just want to play multiplayer. Yeah. Oh my God! Why can't we be dropped down on this situation where we have to survive mm. together uh -huh. and mm. sort it out? And we research it, and our peeps. So yeah, here's the video. Look at this stuff, man! It's so cool. You end up being able to build all kinds of crazy submarines and shit. Mm. Unknown world entertainment. entertainment. Welcome to your greatest nightmare. <gasps> so you start off with a little pod. Uh huh. There we go. The crash. Is that, wow, it looks so small. Splosh. It looks so much bigger than a house. It's a little house. And then there. you end up building all these little pods. As like you can see. We're thing. watching the trailer for Subnautica. You should, anybody who's anybody, just go in and check it out. It's a piece of art. Wow. Jellyfish. You see why you bought the Ooh. game after watching this? Oh, man, these guys are going in. Wow. Oh, man, it's so beautiful, the oh, game. Yeah. This is yeah. what it looks Avatar. like, man. Cool. Yeah, got to get out of there. Don't want to be close to Spidey. Uh, oh, oh, Leviathan. I want to play this game. Oh my it's, god. We've got it here. So you can yeah, you can go ahead and try it. So, me, it, it, this is a beautiful game. Oh, he's coughing. He's got a bit of a underwater disease. He's got a disease maybe. Oh. Anyway, he, um, me and Yakubus, we go online, we Subnautica sets up our um boom. Subnautica sets, uh, uh, has a post on their website that says, man, we actually started off hoping that this would be a multiplayer experiment experience, which you've still gotten so deep now into the game that basically having to put in a multiplayer element would mean that we would have to start from the beginning. Mm. So we can't, uh, we're just not, don't have any plans for that. A little bit more research, and there's just gaming community that was just like, we wanted more. Oh, you're not going to make it? We're going to make it. And then they just made it. Just made a, they just did found a version for PC where you run it through another program and they... It's, uh, here, take it. Open source. Great. Wow. Well, it's just... That's so cool. Outrageous amount That's so cool. mm. of uh, energy just put in because that they're just like, yeah, we need this. We know how to do it. We know that we're... That's what you do when why do musicians work for free because when you're really good at something you know that they need it you you know they need the stuff and you want to give it to them because you're really good at it this guy he just knows how to he knows that i'm just i'm the guy i just know how to code this i've got the energy i know how i've figured it out it doesn't matter that i don't get any money for it because i know that it's just going to make everybody happy mm. i know that my community needs it I can mm. f just feel it, yeah. and that activates me without thought or necessarily being super intellectual about it. It's just mm. that version of sharing when you are an expert. It's great. Uh, yeah, I think that's why we do music as well, actually. That's why I, call, I say to people that I'm not a career musician. 
Do you know even? Do you know what the, is a career musician? Yeah, so that's it's the thing. That's, you've got to define it. Choice. I'm always ready to people to defi- uh, define it it's because in Denmark we have this thing called career. We call it a career. You should probably have it in England as well and around the world. Career politician. We we do have that. Right? <laughs> it's a person have you that, heard about that when you say it in English it sounds so familiar. Yeah. yeah. Career politician is uh, <laughs> it's a uh, but is in in the Danish context it's a person that you would say he's not really a real politician in a way. He's just there mm. sort of keeping on the power. Mm. In a way. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're doing it you don't have any life experience. Career politicians don't actually like go and like find out what the world's like. They just go straight uh, school, university, politician. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's the, that's the thing that they do. Yeah. And and so always, in that yeah. context, what I say is that I'm not a career musician. Mm. I just do it uh, because I'm passionate about it. Yeah. And uh, I'm not. I'm doing my he, politician is doing a job, and I'm doing my job in our society and our existence and yeah, everything you, yeah you're just not choosing to have a thing yeah I'm that's par- your thing i'm participating mm. with what i think is best right mm, yeah. and uh, i'm giving my expertise and of course that costs some money sometimes yeah but it's all but the base of it is not a career thing mm. which you can easily do with music mm. you know there are ways um, many examples yeah. in all kinds of products that are being created where somebody that is not very good at something creates mm. something that mm. is very usable of course fine. It's, it's fine yeah. and you can sort it's of adopt different. those things right yeah um oh that's a good cup of tea right there mm-hmm. mine is is super bad really <laughs> yeah because there was some coffee in it still Oh. And then tea, and then <laughs> oh, not, was... uh, and then and then just not very much milk at all. Oh. <laughs> so I thought that you had a bit of tea in there. Nah. Oh, coffee. Did you have a bit of coffee in yours as well? No, I did not. Huh. Huh. <laughs> but no, enjoy this. This is a moment sponsored by tea. <laughs> <laughs> and a little bit of coffee. Yeah. So, um, what are you working on next? Uh, I've, I've been writing a new album mm-hmm. uh, about, I've been trying to get into the head of this fictional character who is 30 something living in Denmark and kind of doesn't really know how, what to make of the whole uh, refugee crisis. Uh, I'm trying to explore the mind of a person who is who gets who gets emotional when he reads all these articles about drowning children, but then at the same time somehow really struggles to to f- to find find out how it has got anything to do with him. You know, I mean, um, I think, I think we've got, uh, we've got an issue with, uh, not really dealing with reality on this subject. Uh, and I think that in a matter of very few years, this thing will be very real for everybody. Yeah. So I think it's, um, yeah, for me, it's just, it's right now, it's interesting to explore through this thought experiment, and then of course th- through a lot of research. What do you mean by this thing and co- how it becomes very real for yeah, everybody? I mean, <clears throat> climate change and economic crisis, and I mean, we saw what we call the uh, refugee crisis a few years ago, but th- that was just like I mean a small sneak peek at what's going to happen in the Western world in the coming years, and I think. Uh, I think it's it's been a while now where we've like kind of pretended that there is not an issue. I mean, we've been paying off Turkey uh, yeah. and and Greece to That's not uh, so that we don't have to really think about this matter. Yeah. I mean, and and it only shows up as a newspaper article or press photo here and there, and then everybody can agree how horrific it is, but then five minutes later, 
you're on to something else. Mm. Um, and I mean, the easy Another way... Another devastating news story. Yeah, or a story about a social worker who somehow got her hands on some money which wasn't hers or whatever. I mean, yeah. it's just, it, it's, it, it, not, it doesn't... Well, the whole debate has been a big part of the political debate for years, but it's not really about the people. It's more this weird semi-ideological debate about what we can allow ourselves to do or not do to these people coming and asking for our help, basically. Mm -hmm. And I saw, I think, the easy left-wing way to handle this issue would be to just write an album where you would just uh, criticize the hell out of anybody who don't have the compassion to help these people. And I think it's maybe more interesting, at least for me, to try and explore why. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, why a lot of people have these feelings. Or yeah, try and be empathetic with them. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's a valuable lesson. I mean, because I don't think it's them. just all out of just sadistic, evil tendencies. I think there are some very real reasons for people to not really care about all these people who need help. Yeah, mm. for real. Yeah, I've been, I think that's very, I, I really love the way that you, you're you talking about it, actually. I've, I've been battling with it myself a little bit and set, tra setting up now this whole, our constant state right now of Corona. I can't imagine what the hell's going on down there. No. Um, and what kind of extra amount of anxiety that must be bringing to crazy, those uh, uh, hundreds mm -hmm. and thousands uh, of people, millions of people even. Oh, yeah. um, you, uh, there are so many people that don't. I mean, there was a place in Austria, that uh, little town that said, we don't want to take our quota of the, of the refugees, mm -hmm. which in this time was something like 10 or something. Mm. So they just decided to chip together and pay the fine. Mm of a couple of hundred thousand euros mm. for not doing it, that right? Means. And at the same time in Lebanon, we have twice the amount of Syrian refugees than Lebanese. Yeah. Two million, yeah. I think it is, compared to a million Lebanese. Mm. It's like, the situation is completely outrageous. And I'm, I was trying to think of a way to set up, I, one of my, what, what I'm working on right now uh, I think I talked a little bit about maybe I did I talk to you about Mondo Beat yeah. First Nation Orchestra. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So the idea is to create a, a band from that has an inspiration from Nigeria, mm. uh, Fela Kuti, mm. who basically created the style of music called that he called Afrobeat. Mm. It has some certain elements in there that have this thing of it's a groove mm. that goes. And it can be put on, it's very uh, long form, mm. uh, jammy situation. And the idea is to try and take that philosophy and ability in that music and create a large band that sings music about hope mm. and peace uh, for people afflicted by war. Mm. And that we go down there and we play in all of the refugee camps. Um, great. And mm -hmm. th th there is the one thing, there is the simple thing of meeting people on the floor mm -hmm. and also being able to include all of the musicians in the refugee camps, of which yes. there are probably many. Yes. And the style of music is inclusive. Yeah. So it can, and the whole uh, band is basically a choir. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we still got some time. Yeah, yeah. Just, um, I'll, yeah. I'm pulling out a list I want to show you. Oh, cool. And the idea is to try and uh, get down there. But then what, that's one thing, being on the floor, connecting with musicians, creating music, creating hope, singing about peace, making sure that there is a face uh, available to the people of the refugee camps that are, is not just the face of an oppressor, you know, and the yeah. things. Mm -hmm. And people let them know about this. Uh, and then at the same time, use this as a vessel to talk about it. Um, um, I think that's such a great idea. We yeah, do that. Yeah, it's a, it's a, I, I, I even took a, I even went so far that I contacted the um, uh, jazz festival this year mm. and suggested them a pro, the, a one show project yeah. that was this band, 
uh, and found the composer for it and the whole and how to set it up. Thirty people I was going to set cool. up, but then of course the uh, virus yeah. and everything. So yeah. that was kind of kind of be the the starting point of it and <clears throat> start by talking about it and probably you know do a bit of a splash for it to then be able to apply for a whole bunch of funding that can make us go down there. And it's basically a volunteer project. Mm. Yeah, that's just how. Yeah, that'll happen because we do. It's it, it, it's so important. It's just our brothers and sisters are suffering. Mm. That's it uh, under our, and it's just terrible. Also, we uh, well from the sort of like, uh, the, my worldview anyway is that the reason that they're fucked is partly also our fault. That's we it. are, uh, war, Denmark is a warfaring nation. Yes, right. Uh, mm. We have responsibilities. Uh, and it's not just them, and they didn't just, and it's not just Saddam's fault or mm -mm. Gaddafi's fault or whoever. It's our global society that has an issue. Mm. And the issue is kind of the same as it is with the climate crisis. That the hard thing or the hard part is to make it real, is to make it graspable mm -hmm. for the yeah for the layman for yeah. for the for most of the country, really, yeah, the, mm -hmm. this these people who are rightfully uh, very busy just making a living in their own life and not having a lot of time to really get into what's going on and yeah. what will be going on in the future, yeah? yeah. So one thing which made it very real for me is this list I found. It, this was the list that started this songwriting process for uh -huh. my next album. There's a, um, a network called United, United Against Refugee Deaths EU. And uh, they put out this list called List of um, 34,361 documented deaths of refugees and migrants due to the restrictive policies of Fortress Europe. And it's basically a list with a, a date for when this person was found dead, a number for how many persons were found, name, gender, age, region of origin, and then cause of death. And it just goes on. And for me, this made it very real. You could have uh, February 13th, 18, Ibrahim Selim, boy, three years old, in Turkey, missing after boat sunk in the Evros River on Turkish Greek border, who was fleeing post coup crackdown in Turkey. Or February 4th, 18, Maliatu Mali Jalo, woman, 26, unknown origin. Drowned when small wooden boat capsized off coast of the Spanish enclave of Melilla. One survivor. And so on. And what is uh, so heartbreaking about this list is that it's not only people dying from falling out of boats, it's also a lot of people dying inside Europe. Either of illness, because they can't go to any doctor or hospital, but so many deaths, people being run over on highways, mm. people trying to jump on trucks uh, before they cross the Calais channel. Mm. Mm. So many deaths that I know. I mean, if you, if you, and the reality if, is, if you run over a refugee in southern France on the highway, it's not even manslaughter because this person doesn't exist. The, we have these people, of course it's not happening every day, but we have these people lying on the side of the road like a deer because they are just being run over mm. by people in their cars eating french fries. I mean, it's crazy. Yeah? Mm. So for me, this list made it very real for yeah, me. It's pretty real, mm. man. And I think we need these things to understand how real it is. Because it's, I mean... Because it's a very complex situation and of course we also have to accept that there are also a lot of valid arguments even though I do not agree with them there are a lot of valid arguments as to why we cannot take in a lot of refugees and so on we need to accept these arguments if we are ever gonna have a proper discussion about these things mm -hmm. yeah 
it just feels like so many of these issues get swept under the rug so often by our governments that they just sit there smoldering mm. and then and and a little bit gets done but it's mainly so so slow and there's just so many people who, whose lives are just in this terrible stasis where they yeah they're locked between worlds in detention centers mm. um with the sort of terrible rights and just you know yeah it's got to be it has to but then there's so many things that distract um, and I guess with a lot, in a lot of cases, it's just people wait until there's a crisis, yeah, more crisis, and then they do something. Mm. I mean, that's the human pattern, yeah, that we yeah. need a decent crisis for us yeah. to act. Yeah. yeah. And the problem with the climate crisis and the refugee crisis alike is probably that when the crisis, the real crisis hits, mm. I'm not saying it's too late. But it's going to be very late at that point. Yeah. And there will already be so much suffering which has already taken place when we get to a crisis as clear as, for instance, this corona crisis. I mean, there will be thousands upon thousands of people dying as they try to flee from a country ridden by war. There will be thousands and thousands of people dying because of climate change before we get a situa a lockdown situation in Denmark like we have today because of these things. Mm. Well, Mark, thank you so much mm. for doing your work on the <laughs> on that, man. Mm. It's uh, really uh, inspiring to listen to you so talk inspiring. about it, yeah. bringing up some bringing up the facts and also making. Uh, emotional concrete understandable versions of this for people to understand thank you for your powerful work yeah. thank you and thank you so much for coming in you really brought me brought tears to my eyes you're a really powerful person i wish you all the best likewise